Assalamu alaikum my lovely brothers and sisters. I hope all of you are well inshallah. My name is Nadia. I'll be taking over my salam at Instagram story today. I'm a mother of three. That's Yusuf in the back enjoying his apples. Um, we're going to talk about lots of different things today. So it's nearly time for Yusuf to go to nursery so I just want to very briefly talk about something with yourselves and kind of get the discussion started. Hopefully I'll be um, adding to the story throughout the day inshallah. Just take a minute to think back to your childhood when you was really small. Try and think back to your uh, earliest memories that you can remember in your life. What are the kind of memories that you can remember about being a child? What kind of things do you remember your parents saying to you? What kind of experiences do you remember? It's really important that we do this exercise and we really do it in a meaningful kind of way. I want you to close your eyes, sit somewhere just for a few minutes and just try and remember what do you remember about your childhood? What do you remember about your parents? How did they treat you? How did they speak to you? How much time did they used to give you? The day that we were born, we were born without any values, without any understanding of the world, without any belief system at all. We didn't know what, what wealth was, what was it to be happy, um, what things are good, what things are bad. All of those beliefs were largely shaped by us. We felt that our parents were totally invincible. They were so clever. They knew everything. You know, my dad could drive. Mum had lots of money, they could go shopping, they were independent, they seemed to know everything and we looked to them as our role models and for our guidance. Reflecting on my childhood makes me be able to relate more to my children, I can connect with them more, I can be softer in those challenging situations and it always reminds me that I am such a big influence in their life, it, it makes me question my choices, are able to pick up the smallest of things their parents say and do the very small mannerisms, the little things we do, the little things we may not even notice that we do ourselves. Our children notice all of those things. And it makes me question my choices, the decisions I make, the way. Now it's no longer just about me and my choices and my likes and dislikes. I'm able to influence three human beings for the rest of their life. I'm setting the foundation for these children and, you know, their thought process, their perspective, their belief system. Allah has given us this massive responsibility and it becomes even more important for us to start self-reflecting, start self-assessing and start looking at ourselves, looking at our behaviours, attitudes, the things we say, how positive or negative we are, what kind of, kind of behaviour that we repeat very often, any kind of thought or habits that we have that we repeat regularly is stored in our subconscious mind and it becomes like a default behaviour that we kind of reach for each and every time. I want to encourage you to start thinking about the kind of things that you're surrounding your children with. What kind of things are you giving priority to? What kind of things are you making important in your child's life today? How do you make them feel about these things? You know, what kind of feelings do they have about Islam, Quran? As I was growing up, Islam was pretty much a very fixed part of our life. Like, we'd go to mosque every single day after school. But I feel as though there was lots of negative um, associations with it for us. Like, we'd get hit, we'd get shouted at if we read the Quran. It actually encourages a gentle behaviour with children and love and compassion towards children. The Prophet always made children feel very special and loved when they were in his presence. But due to these experiences that we've had and the way we felt at the time, our brain saved this. Due to you know the way that we were treated at the time and the way we were made to feel, our brain saves this negative association with Islam. And later on in life, we struggle to practice our religion and move towards Allah. And of course, in order for us to be able to change our values and beliefs, we need to give a bit of practical advice for you. When your children are learning Qaeda or if they're going to mosque or if you know, you're know you trying to incorporate any Islamic values, please never shout at them or please never ever kind of force them to do that particular thing. Your purpose should never be you know, how fast will my child complete the Quran or how fast will they memorize such and such surah. It should be more about the feelings that are associated with the Qur'an. How do they feel when they're listening to Qur'an? How do they feel when you talk about the Prophet talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We shouldn't be talking about Allah's, you know, wrath. We should be talking about Allah's love, His mercy, His compassion. We shouldn't be talking about the hellfire. We should be focusing more on Jannah. And also talking about it in a loving, positive kind of way. We're kind of developing God consciousness in our children and a love for Allah. And then also a love for prayer, reflection, and you know the Quran, and that can only be done with like positive associations, you know, um, and happy feelings around those things. Just like the salamat and other Islamic toys really help, you know, develop that positive association with Islam. And then it's also about connection as well. When you're when you're praying, bring your child's prayer mat and put it down next to yours, and let them kind of join in, and they can spend time with. You. This is my son Ismail. 
He's in year one. Hello. And uh, he's a really good boy, aren't you? Yeah. Do you want to recite a surah for us? Which surah? Uh, yeah. Uh, Alam Tara. Go on then. Alam Tara Kaifa Fa Alam Rahman Rahim. Alam Tara Kaifa Fa Alam Rabbuka Bi Ashabil Fil Alam Yaj Al Kaidahum Fi Al Tadalil Wa Arsala. Al-Sala alayhim Tayran ababil Tayramihim Bihijaratin Min Sijin Baja'alahum Ka'a I found that useful inshallah This is Eliza, my eldest Then there's Ismail, the middle one Yusuf over there And I think I need to stop now Because they're kind of getting a bit carried away So I hope you found that useful inshallah And if you'd like to learn more about us so if you found what my mum was talking about useful, please do see more of us on Nadia's Choice, which is my mum's name, and she's amazing. Oh, thanks, Just Eliza. Amazing. And Eliza's amazing too. <laughs> found my Snapchat takeover Bye -bye. useful today, inshallah. Let me know if it was useful Bye -bye. and if you enjoyed you know, our discussion today. Bye. Bye-bye from a smile. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yusuf, where are you? Come here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Rahmanahim Alam Tara Kaifa Fa Ala Rabbuka Bi Ashabil Fil Alam Yaj Al Kaidahum Fil Tadalil Wa Arsala